Did you know that humans are superorganisms? It is estimated that there are about 30 trillion human cells in an adult body. That is the number 3 followed by 13 zeros. But the human body is also home to many microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, or fungi collectively called the microbiota. Various scientific studies, starting with the Human Microbiome Project in 2007, have put the total number of these microorganisms anywhere between 39 and 100 trillion. Yes, that means the human body has more microbial cells than it does human cells at least in terms of sheer numbers. More microbes than human cells? Yes. The microbial communities that live on and within the human body have been assimilated by their human hosts over a long period of time, during the evolutionary process, due to their beneficial contributions to the organism's metabolism and overall health status. One of the reasons we're typically not aware of their presence, is their microscopic size. Some of them can be a thousand times smaller than a human cell. So, while their numbers are great, the microbiota weighs only about 2 kg. That is just a bit over how much our brains weigh, which is about 1.5 kg. But, where is the microbiota located in the human body? The microbiota is most abundant on the skin and inside human body cavities connected to the outside, such as the gastrointestinal tract. The distribution of various microbial communities depends upon the pH of the environment they live in. More recent research has also found microbial communities inside human organs and systems previously considered sterile, such as the blood, lymph nodes, brain, heart, liver, bones, etc. Imagine how surprised Louis Pasteur would have been to discover all this and how that would have affected his germ theory. So, how does the microbiota support its human host? The most prolific by far is the gut microbiota, particularly the microbial communities that live inside the large intestine. They feed by fermenting complex carbohydrates, like resistant starches and fiber that cannot be digested in the small intestine by the host's enzymes. Then, they release metabolites, such as short-chain fatty acids, enzymes, neurotransmitters, or hormones, that can cross into the blood circulation, contributing to the host's metabolic, structural, and protective functions. The main short-chain fatty acids produced by the microbiota are acetate, butyrate, and propionate. Inside the gut, they provide energy and nutrition to the large intestine lining, which does not receive blood supply from the host. They also help reduce local inflammation and protect the gut from dysbiotic flora, thus strengthening the intestinal barrier and preventing disorders such as leaky gut syndrome. Outside of the gut, the microbiota are in direct contact with the brain via the gut-brain axis. This continuous, bi-directional communication highway extends the influence of the microbiota over the entire organism via the vagus nerve and the neuroendocrine system, which includes the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The microbiota metabolites complement the host's glucose and lipid regulatory mechanisms. They improve glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity and modulate appetite control by curbing the brain's reward-based eating behaviors. The microbiota is capable of synthesizing essential vitamins that humans cannot produce on their own, such as vitamins K and B complex. They can also metabolize bile acids that have not been reabsorbed into secondary bile acids by the host. All these beneficial properties help protect the organism against disorders such as metabolic disease syndrome. Microbiota metabolites also help regulate the host's immune system and inflammatory response by influencing the production of cytokines, dendritic cells, T-cells, or the IgA defense mechanism. They not only produce their own antimicrobial substances, but also influence the host to produce antimicrobial substances as well. This way, the microbiota and the host complement each other in combating pathogens in the gut, while also maintaining a balanced mix of commensal bacteria. 
The gut microbiota synthesize some neurotransmitters or their precursors, which are then delivered up to the brain across the blood-brain barrier. As such, the microbiota actively participate in the regulation of neurotransmitters, affecting neuronal activity, cognitive function in the brain, and host behavior. Recent studies have been looking into the link between gut dysbiosis and neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, or autism spectrum disorder. Wow! I didn't know that the microbiota have such an important influence on their human host. How do they do it? Well, scientists have just begun to understand the crucial role the microbiota play in the human body. Coming off the completion of the Human Genome Project in 2003, the attention was shifted to our microscopic partners in 2007 with the Human Microbiome Project. One surprising discovery showed that the microbiota contribute a colossal amount of genes to the organism, compared to its human counterpart. While the initial estimates indicated that there were about 100 times more bacterial genes than human genes, it was eventually established that the human genome contributes 63,494 genes, while the microbiota contribute 9,879,896 genes. That means the human body has roughly 155 times more microbial genes than it does human genes. This makes it a lot easier to see how the microbiota have such a great influence on so many essential processes inside the human body. The Human Microbiome Project along with its European counterpart Metahit have identified 2,172 species of microbiota, pertaining to 12 phyla. Of these, the four that account for about 93.5% of the microorganisms found in the human body are Firmicutes, Bacteroides, Proteobacteria and Actinobacteria. It is important to mention here that the composition of the microbiota is influenced by environmental factors, particularly the host's diet. The microbiota feed mainly on carbohydrates. The ones residing in the small intestine have adapted to digest simple carbohydrates, such as glucose, due to their local availability. The large intestine microbiota, though, consume complex carbohydrates that cannot be digested in the small intestine by the host's enzymes, such as those available from resistant starches and fiber. These have been dubbed Microbiota Accessible Carbohydrates, or MACs. Regional trends in dietary habits have the power to shape the microbiome of entire communities of people. For example, the American overprocessed diet is rich in simple carbohydrates and low in max. This impacts the biodiversity of the American gut microbiota, shown in blue on the graph, greatly reducing their beneficial contribution to the organism. In stark contrast, diets on the African continent and some other indigenous communities across the world are high in complex carbohydrates giving rise to very different and more biodiverse microbiota communities, shown in red and green on the graph. The African gut microbiota distribution is a lot more similar to that of our ancestors, who also ate a primarily plant-based, mac-rich diet. When the gut microbiota do not receive enough macs to feed on, they revert to metabolizing carbohydrates and protein from the host disrupting the local homeostasis and even turning dysbiotic. This has been associated with the pathogenesis of some infections, as well as inflammatory and chronic diseases. So, what can we do to have a healthy gut microbiota? There are several things that can be done across the age continuum to help develop and maintain a healthy microbiome. In early infancy, being delivered vaginally and fed breast milk ensures the gut is colonized with a healthy, diverse microbial spectrum. The beneficial microbial communities in the gut can be maintained throughout the lifespan with a healthy lifestyle centered around a MAC-rich diet, free of antibiotics and other toxicants. The MAC-rich diet is based upon plant foods that are high in resistant starches and fiber, such as legumes and whole grains. Notable examples are barley, beans, chickpeas, lentils, nuts, oats, 
peas, potatoes, soybeans, or whole grain rice. There are functional lab tests that analyze the composition of your body's genetics and epigenetics. While genetic testing provides individualized details about the human genome, microbiome testing shows the current constellation of microbes inside your gut. Combined, these tests deliver very detailed, individualized, and comprehensive results that can help you understand the lifestyle choices that are needed to optimize the partnership you have with your gut microbiota. A healthy gut is essential to influencing the entire organism towards optimal health. The test results point you towards specific non-invasive, drug-free interventions you can implement in your life that can get you started on a journey towards balance and wellness. Our integrative medicine professionals can guide and support you on this path of self-discovery and transformation. If you are ready, or simply want to know more, please visit our website. You will find a wealth of information there.